Oh, and oh no, green t-shirt. Hello and welcome back to my sanctuary in the clouds here for another episode of the Gibbering GM. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you how I go about communicating the settings to the players. My name's Inwills and welcome to the in crowd. So I actually started to DM or GM back in my teens. That's a long time ago. And I mainly did Advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition. Very fond memories of that game. Now at this time, we would actually gather around my mom's dining room table and put down floor plans and erect a DM screen and to play the games normally all day on a bank holiday Monday. But after gaming on Twitch for a while, I suddenly became aware that the RPG scene was still alive and thriving. I did get a sudden rush of excitement there. I must admit and I suddenly saw people not only still using tabletop and dice but actually virtual software and while I was engaging with this new uh, this new virtual software I suddenly got introduced to the phrase the theater of the mind now that's the moment when scenes and encounters are described to the players for them to picture in their head Often this was coupled with, I'm sorry, I haven't had time to make detailed maps this week. So we will be using our theatre of the mind. However, I think the theatre of the mind can be used alongside maps and floor plans. One of the main jobs, I think, personally, of a GM is to effectively communicate the setting to the players. So I thought I would let you into how I do this as a GM and how I go about planning to achieve this within my sessions. I never know which pronoun to use at this point. Are there my sessions and my campaign or our sessions and our campaign? fit in whichever one you think works best. Remember, if you have joined, enjoyed any of this video or any of the videos on this channel, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. It really does help both my channel, my self-confidence and supports my dreams. And for that little extra support, if you know what I mean, then the link to the Patreon page is down below. On. So I've split this how to communicate the settings um, video to three sections. I'm going to talk about maps, images and the narrative. And do stay tuned because later on there's a problem that I have that I hope you will be able to help me with. So first up maps. Now I often search or scour the internet for really good maps for my main encounters and just a couple of recommendations for you if you haven't checked out two minute tabletop maps um it's they're done by a fantastic artist called um ross and you can find it on the internet i'll put the link in the comments below he does some fantastic map work um very atmospheric and very interesting and he does have a wonderful patreon site when you get freebies as well and also if you are a world 20 user of maps then I would love to recommend Gabriel Picard um, you can find um, his maps on the world 20 marketplace do go and check both of these creators out there make some fantastic maps and well they are a lot of the time my main tool for inspiration. I have often see maps as a starting point of an adventure or an encounter and sometimes I will see a map and think wow I want to use that and then actually create the, uh, the session and the adventure around that specific map. So maps for me are mainly to describe um, very specific settings when there's going to need to be some tactical interaction. So there might be a, 
uh, a battle or some kind of social interaction when we have to actually be very clear where everything is, including where everybody is. They often promote a more tactical approach to a setting and you have to be careful um, when actually using them. You know, if there's if people the party are going around exploring say for example a deserted village and they go into random houses and you just give the description and then all of a sudden they go into one house and you say right i'm just going to put you onto this map then it sort of like gives the game away that something is going to be happening within that um, location so keep that in mind the other thing is that i have a bit of problem with maps when it comes to that tactic tactical element of them so please do stay tuned to the end when i pose you a question or if you're fed up of listening to me then the zoom along there now so number two on the list are images now i absolutely adore images i really think they can provide the player with something to base their vision in or their imagination of the setting actually on often images are provided within modules and adventures and these can be easily copied and pasted and shared with the players i always use these to accompany um, the narrative which i will talk about later but images can be used for more than just certain locations i often use images <coughs> excuse me to provide an idea about what say a forest is like or what the plains would look like or the width of the river is or even what the um, town looks like when they actually arrive i use them a lot for providing that sense of atmosphere I also use imagery, imagery to communicate what certain things look like. I, I use it a lot in the Mithras setting for tattoos or fronts of book covers or things like that. And of course, on Roll20, once these are shared to the players, they can also go back and keep an eye on it and look it up again so they have that journal idea with them and look back on past items and artifacts. And finally, the narrative. I definitely save the best to last. And for me, it's probably the most important way that GMs communicate the setting or the atmosphere to players. Now, I actually use the narrative in a variety of ways, including with imaging and to accompany maps. And I've actually developed my own approach to creating a narrative across the years. And now I'm settled on something that I quite enjoy and feel happy with. So I thought I would share that that this process with you just just in case you're a newbie GM or you might find it useful. First, um, despite what other people might say, I do not write specific narratives for specific set scenes. I have found that sometimes you GM sort of like slip into that narrative, that script, and it becomes very much apparent to players that you're reading something which gives that element of surprise away. It's almost they sort of like think, oh, he's take he or she's taken time to write all this down, so there must be something important there. Now, you could write a detailed narrative for everything, which I think is not um you are not achievable so what i do is that i actually write bullet points with phrases or ideas that i have so when i come across the scene i can quickly look at that and then talk and yes there's still a lot of ooms ooms in there but i feel it's the same for every encounter now I, what I do when I'm writing a description of a setting is the first thing I do is that I visualize it in my own head and sometimes I'll close my eyes to do this and I'm blessed, probably my only um, positive quality, I'm blessed with a, quite a powerful imagination and sometimes this does cause me some sleepless nights after say I've watched a horror film. 
Anyway, what I do is that I visualize it and sometimes I close my eyes and do it. And then I visualize myself walking around the scene or the setting. And as I walk around in my, <coughs> in my mind's eye, I look around and sort of like think what could be there, what could be there, what could be there. Now, in order to help me with this, I focus on six things, six elements that I try to describe. And I used to do this a lot when I was a teacher and we were trying to write descriptive content for um, stories and things like that. So what are the six things? Well, the, think of it as five senses. Yep, I know there's probably more than five senses. I personally go for nine, but some people go for a lot more. But let's just stick for five to start off with. So I I try to think of sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. Okay, those are the basic five things. And then I have another thing that I think about as my palm, which is the emotion. So what I will do when I'm creating a narrative for a, a location is that I'll put bullet points down for each one of these and I'll put maybe a phrase or something that reminds me um, I might put uh, some kind of um, simile or a metaphor in there that's you know says as cold as death or I might say cobwebs dangling and brushing against face or something like that now you might think oh well taste is not very useful but it, it might not only be reserved for objects because sometimes you can use phrases like the taste of death hangs in the air i'm currently um reading a book um, where the main character is called quincy harker i'll put the links down below or if you go along to my website inwills.co.uk there's always a little ticker up at the top of the site saying what i'm currently reading anyway he's sort of like a demon hunter and he talks about the metallic taste of blood hanging in the air when he when the main character um, enters crime scenes so um, don't just brush it aside. Think about what taste might be in the air. Is that dry taste? Think about the smell. Think about touch. You know, what does it feel like? The temperature or that um, foreboding sense that you sometimes get. And the, the, so each one of my fingers and my thumb so sort of like are those five bits and then the middle bit talks about emotion and this is really important to me now in games like Shadowrun I'm not talking about sixth edition don't get me started this might relate to the sort of like the background magic count which I think they've taken out or maybe some kind of psychics feeling you know if you're playing games that have the supernatural in but sometimes I want to communicate how the setting makes the characters feel now whether or not this is relaxed and chilled um, in a familiar place or even that familiar place where they normally feel relaxed and chilled there's that tension in the air or it might be that they walk into a tavern and all the eyes turn on to them and they get that sense of unease as all the strangers look at them now, what I do is that no matter where the party goes, no matter where they interact, I use this method. So if they go to somewhere that I'm not expecting, then off the camera, I'm actually got my hands up like this, my fingers up, and I'm actually counting off um, each of the sort of like the narrative areas. And so most areas have the same feel yes the ones that i've jotted notes down tend to have a little bit more and whether more creative but generally everything will be the same so putting all of these together so maps imagery and uh, the narrative i i find that i've become a lot more confident um not only writing descriptive narratives in this bullet points but also creating them on the fly now I said before that there might be something that you can help me with. And this is the moment that I'm going to share it with you. So sometimes when I present a map to my group of players, everything becomes very tactical. Um, this can sometimes lead to role playing being reduced and everything becoming 
too tactical for example we go into this corner we look around that corner so nobody can see us from here or somebody notices something on the map and sort of like says i will go to this little table and set around that side of it so and do you, i hope i'm you get what i mean and i wondered as a gm or a player do you have any ways that you sort of like uh present um prevent this from happening or is there a way you encourage your players to engage with maps so it prevents things becoming too tactical so if you do have an answer to the question then by all means send it to me in a comment below so that's it i've tried to keep this video as short and sweet as i possibly can without moving my arms too far out the way so it spoils the imagery of the green screen i hope it's been helpful for you and helped you to communicate play settings to your players and please remember if you have enjoyed this video or found it helpful then please consider liking commenting and subscribing now next time i do a gibbering gm video i am going to talk about what i think as a gm makes a, the perfect player or the best player are you one well come along next time and have a listen until next time have fun everyone and i'll catch you later and until then happy role playing see you all later